Greetings and salutations. It's hot outside. Check this out. Oh, that's in the garage, in the shade. Oh, it's hot. But it's a dry heat. There is some truth to that. It's The, the humidity is not 80%, but it's still hot. Holy cow, and you don't want to be out there laying on the concrete because the concrete's probably hot enough to boil an egg. I would get an egg and show you, but I don't want to waste an egg. I had some people asking, when are you going to get a, a bus update? I'm right now. Well, I haven't been working on the bus because we've gotten into this, uh, this you know, part of the year where it's unbearably hot to work out there. And plus I'm working on other things, you know, I got the lift kit on the Jeep and I'm putting the dually back together and fixing tools and uh, going through my horde and thinning some stuff out. I got to make a run to the scrap yard, probably the end of the week. What I want to do is get that mini split up and running. I've got my 50 amp to 30 amp adapter and I got this little uh, adapter here to run to my welding cable so I can plug the bus in now except my cable still doesn't reach from the back tire to the outlet so I have to get an extension cord yet and I also have my exhaust pipe for the generator uh, finished and wrapped I have to get a gasket yet then I can install that and then uh, hook up the fuel system and get the generator running and then my power will be all uh, hooked up good to go but let's talk about the mini split for a minute so the mini split AC system has a wall mount that the that the uh, the inside unit hooks onto, and this is that wall mount. Probably more than adequate. Well, it is more than adequate for for a house because most of the weight is borne right here. This locks into the into the housing, and then it just kind of clicks into the bottom here. And this is what supports that wall unit. The only problem is is that it's made out of I don't know, I'll have to, to cut this to, and gauge it, but it looks like probably 29 gauge. It's pretty thin. I mean, it's flimsy as heck. My concern is that with the, with the bus going down the road like this and then swaying back and forth, like it might fall off. And that's no good. I don't want that to happen for sure. I made one out of 16 gauge, and this is considerably stiffer. This one I installed, I just screwed it in, you know, just with a small screw. This is actually going to get bolted in with four quarter 20 bolts. So, my bad. It's just after 5 o'clock p.m. now. Uh, in a couple of hours, the sun will have gone down uh, and be low in the sky. And uh, the temperature will have dropped a little bit. We won't be in the heat of the day. Uh, there's a nice little breeze tonight. I think I'll probably go and turn the AC on right now and in, in, in hopes of uh, getting the temperature down. And, and if it does, I'll install this tonight. If not, I'll install it first thing in the morning. And I want to get this AC up and running this week. So first things first. Alright, so here's the wires that control the outside unit. It appears that uh, I gave myself very little slack in the main supply lines, but oh, oh lord, oh that feels so good. Hey, so 
I need to consult the Manuel. Where is the Manuel? Let's see if well, that's not it. Is that it? Well, here's the, the bits. Oh, look at that. That's it. The one good thing about working in this bus in this heat is that when you come out, 100 degrees outside still, you come out of that sweat box and there's a little bit of a breeze going. Oh, it feels like air conditioning, even though it's still 100 degrees outside. I gotta tell you, I'm a much, a much happier neighbor. Most of the morning that sprinkler was running, so he's got her water down pretty good. He's moving over to there, though. Last weekend they brought in a, a fifth wheel trailer and they're actually living there now in, in their fifth wheel trailer. Good for them, I guess. I need air conditioning in that bus if I'm gonna do anything in that bus anymore this summer. All right, a few days later, it's uh, 8 o'clock at night. Now that says 12, but it's 8 o'clock at night. Day. I was looking through some footage and realized I didn't film the day that I uh, hooked up the, the rest of the um, heat pump. I got the heat pump mounted up on the wall again inside the bus. I've got the supply lines installed and tightened down. And I've got the wiring that runs from the inside unit to the outside unit hooked up and installed. Because it's the uh, the inside unit that feeds power to the outside unit. The other thing I've been working on that I've been avoiding for a very long time is the heater box here. Up here above me, a little eye with a circle around it. If you click on that, it'll take to the video where I opined about um, doing away with the original bus heater. Because, uh, you know, the engine's in the back, right? And to run coolant from the back all the way to the front it's 80 feet of coolant line and it's not a small line it's one inch and then i discovered that there was an onboard uh diesel fired preheater i thought about using that and i thought yeah i just leave it alone leave it the way it is and just uh use uh one of the intermediate heaters instead of the great big 32 inch uh heater the heat exchanger up here i'm using one of the intermediate well, let me show you let me show you what i'm doing the reason why i can't use the original bus heater that was up there was because the floor is now two and a quarter inches taller than it was when the original bus heater was in here. It won't fit. What I ended up doing is building a, a new box. That's not complete yet. I got to put a, a lid on here and close this top off. This may or may not make sense. So that these fans blow air up through these ports, right? They, it's going to suck in air through the heat exchanger. And when the blend door is open for the defroster, it'll go up through that into the defrost and defrost the windshield. And if you want to turn it off, you turn the blend door off and it forces air down through this square and into this, into this chamber where there'll be a diffuser on this side and this little port here, down here, put this ball valve here and this will direct heated air at the driver's feet. And this one feeds another ball valve like this over to the driver's side toll window, I guess is what they call it, to keep that uh, defrosted. Probably will never need to use this. Hopefully we'll never need to use this, but it's nice to have. And uh, in reality, it probably will only be used and turned on when I absolutely positively need it. In other words, I'm using PEX too, I don't know if you noticed that or not, but it's one inch PEX that goes from the bulkhead fitting all the way up to the front. That'll convert before it goes around the driver and hooks up to the heat exchanger. It'll go turn from PEX to rubber and that'll be buried inside the wall. Here's the original controls, right? Cable controls for the heater. This, you know, goes to that uh, blend door for the defroster, the recirculating air. There was another door that went all the way through the floor that just opened up and brought fresh air in from the outside. You could close that, I omitted that. This other one here is for this heat valve, right? So it's one inch coming out of the engine block, one inch heater hose, and then it gets choked all the way down one inch to five eighths to three quarter. It's choked down from one inch all the way down to three quarter. I'm doing away with this valve. So it was one inch um, heater hose that came out of the 
the engine block into the circulation pump into this valve out of this valve through the, uh, the intermediate heaters and all the way up to the front of the bus and then back into the engine and then on the engine there's a ball valve coming out and going into the engine so you can isolate that entire loop from the engine block all the way to the front of the bus you can isolate all that coolant and all that flow from the engine you can shut it completely off and trap all that coolant about three gallons worth in that loop in most cases i will have three gallons of coolant in reserve because the only time i'll ever use that heater is if i need it i'll get out of the bus i'll go to the engine compartment and i'll open them ball valves and then i'll go back up to the driver's seat i'll flip the toggle switch for the circ pump and start pumping coolant and i'll turn on the fans and then the next time i pull over and don't need it anymore i'll turn those valves off so that's a long way of saying i'm just not gonna be using it that often but it's it's one of those things that you probably should have right you know it might be 80 degrees in the valley and you get up coming over a mountain pass and it might be snowing you might need a defroster so probably gonna i'm gonna try to come out here tomorrow morning while it's cool and it's just been so damn hot out here I, I saw the weather the other day for Michigan, and Michigan's like in the middle of a heat wave right now. Temperatures that are pretty close to our temperatures, but with the humidity, and got to be unbearable. That's why I moved away from there. I don't mind heat, I don't mind sweating, but humidity sucks donkey balls. People over there in the, in the Midwest and in the eastern states where you're going through that heat wave, I'm praying for you, man. But that's what I'm working on right now. Things are happening really slow. There's a lot of things going on out here at the ranch. The kids are all in summer activities, and it's, it's, man, just comparing last summer to this summer and how much I was getting done last summer compared to this summer, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, you, you parents know what I'm talking about. But that's all I've got today. If you're so inclined, underneath this window is a uh, subscribe button. It's big and red. can hardly miss it. Sticks out like a dick in a Disney movie. Click that. Subscribe you know, so that uh, you can be part of this community. And then right next to it is a little picture of a bell. Click on that bell icon and you'll be notified of future uploads. If, uh, if you don't mind and you've got something to say, good, bad, or indifferent, go ahead down there in the comment section and hammer away at the keys and comment to your heart's content. Whatever you want. I read them all and I appreciate you taking the time to do that, by the way. It means a lot to me. And then... Um, share this with your vast social media network. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Just hammer away at that like button. If you thought it sucked and I should go take a long walk in a short pier, click that down button. Either way is okay with me. Until next time, you have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep the powder dry, and have a splendid day. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a big puddle of oil.